finally qualifying in the summer, like, you have to come up with something. Like, you have to dig deep down to really show everyone that you wanted to be here and you deserve to be here. So, here we go then. Into game Gambit versus Meet Your Makers. Game three of our Super Week 9. And, uh, of course, we have eight games coming up today. So, still plenty of League of Legends action coming your way. Welcome so, don't leave Sunday your house. Day. That's basically what you need to do right now. And there's a head-to-head -head result, of course. Three to zero. Gambit won all three encounters so far. Meet Your Makers, as I said, it's going to be tough. Jason, walk us through level one. Well, if anything, I would imagine it be on Gambit's side. You have the quick initiate out of Lee Sin. You also have that hook landing, then the gold card to follow up. But as we're seeing right now, I mean, Gambit just want to get some wars down. They want to know where Makati is going. Since it's a Nunu, he's very prone to counter jungling you. And against a Lee Sin, it's going to be a little hard for him to kind of do that against a Dorn's bladed Lee Sin, which we have to point out as well. But there's always that possibility if he can steal something away that it really keeps Diamond behind. And Lee Sin's not a champion that you really want to fall behind with. And then. We also see a Doran Shield Star for Chara, which is becoming a lot po more popular lately. Um, obviously, you can eat a lot more harass in that lane, and you also get that extra regen, and it's actually a very strong item. A lot of people don't really pick it up. So, bit of a quiet start after uh, that initial ward going down there from Gambit on the top side. There's a couple down on the bottom side of the map as Voidal and Genja are actually holding on, and Makla's gonna face check right into the middle of them. There's the Ignite going down. Barrier already used by Makla. He flashes over the wall, and well, he's used both of his summoners right just like that. Yeah, and right now, Diamond's like, hmm, I'm looking at that bottom lane for free kill, but they're actually going for an invade here. They're trying to keep this blue off of Makate, and this would be a terrible start. He needs to be able to secure this. He does obviously have smite and have his consume, but they're trying to go for a steal here. They're trying to make it assume that he's not going to smite it. And they've got two men guarding their own blue buff here as well. This could be very, very interesting. That ward will stay up there. Stun card pulled. Limit going to get stunned up there, but he will flash as well over the top of the wall. And... Well, this bottom lane have got no escapes left now. Yeah, it's not a good start at all. I mean, we've talked about earlier in the season how Meech Makers, when they get put behind, they kind of stay behind. They don't know how to recover from that. And this is exactly what Gambit is doing to them. And not to mention Mako, just like with no summoners, you're so prone to being ganked, especially by Elise Sin, who started at blue, so he's going to be coming down bottom. And voidly uh, causing all kinds of harassment over towards Makata. And he's going to see that being uh, numbed down. They do finally get down into lane as once again Makla. Now he's had to obviously go home to heal. He's used his barrier, he's got no flash, as doesn't Libic. So overall, this bottom lane from Meet Your Makers have to be so careful now. Yeah, they do, especially if you get like hooked by a mis or with a misfortune who does so much damage earlier on. She's like one of the strongest AD carries pre-level six or even at level six with that bullet time. So they have to be very careful and that makes you wonder, will Makati come around and try to help that bottom lane as Diamond, instead of ganking that bottom lane, he's actually just farming away in that jungle. It looks like he wants that level 4 before he goes in for any sort of gank, but he also doesn't really need to force it because he knows Makati's behind. A bit of a pink ward battle down in his bottom lane. You see the exhaust being used there. There goes the flay on towards Libic. He's very, very low from this one. First blood comes into Genja and Makla. I'm not sure that he can really stand to this one either, but he will go back off towards the tower. Uses the explosions there onto Genja, who will go low from it, but they've picked up that first blood crucially. Wait a minute. Did, was Genja aggressive there? No, I don't believe that. I mean, we never see him play aggressive, and it might be a result of that boot camp. He might have changed up his style a little bit. He's done it in the past. But you see how well it works out for him right now. It's Mackler, 3 CS, 4 minutes in to 15 CS on Genja, who can just free farm away right now. Yeah, and holding out that lane really nicely here as well. Stopping Mackler really getting into range for most of it as he just comes out. Ah, can get one CS there from that one. Let's, let's not go too far with that one. Uh, but Voidal doing a great job in terms of positioning here, you have to say, from that first kill. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been doing a fantastic job. Dime coming on the top lane, though, to go for a gank on a Kuban. He's actually going to be stuck here, but he will have that flash. Yeah, Repel coming in from that one. The Q will land. Oh. Wow, and Kuban flashing behind the tower there. He thought that Diamond was going to follow in. And that might just be nerves right there. I and mean, that's really unfortunate because if you're going to flash, you got to make sure they're committing something as well. Maybe get him under that turret. But Makati, he's sticking around in Gambit. They're trying to go for a kill here. Oh, they've landed the kill into Mia once again. Kuban going to go down from this, but Makata is now chasing in. He's got the Ignite on towards Diamond. Can he get away from this one? There is a smite going down on towards the minions, but he will go down, and that's the buffs transferred back over to Makata. And that was a fantastic try by Diamond right there. He popped his Iron Will just to uh, smite it away to get some extra spell vamp in there, but he also uses W on himself instead of Tegdarian to kind of escape right there. But either, or either way, good turnaround Makati now, who was behind earlier on because of that blue buff harass, is now caught up with that double buff. He's going to have a refresh on it, and this would be a really big nuisance to deal with. So, oh, two to one, 700 gold lead here right from the start for Gambit. And 
Well, it's good that Makata got that kill there because things could be going very badly for them right now if that had not happened. But still not all perfect at this stage. We'll see how this one really develops. You can see that bottom lane, they continue to put the pressure on towards Makla, who I'm lucky there that Voidal actually, I think, tried to aim his hook as to where Makla was going to go, but he just stood still, so he missed anyway in the end. Uh, but if you look at the levels there, obviously Genja got the advantage from that one, and he's done a very Genja-like thing yeah. of picking up triple Doran's blade. So it's a little un well, it's unusual overall, but not really unusual for him, <laughs> just like you're saying. But it Tia's coming next. Oh, I, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not on misfortune. But what it does give him though is that extra presence in lame, that extra damage, so he can afford to dual Mackler even more. Not to mention the life steal, because he wasn't running any flat uh, or any percent life steal on his uh, runes in here. But Darren actually being very aggressive on Kuban because. Diamond was around, and Mackler, oh, Diamond, Darren actually came taken very wow. low. Wow, Kubon actually going very aggressive from this one. Diamond's not really close to him, as you see the Repel coming. Has he got the finisher? Yes, he has. Kubon picks up the kill. He's got a level advantage here over on Diamond. He's going to have to try and dodge this Q, throws down the Cocoon. Diamond going to get decent damage into him here, but there's a lot of minions there as well, and wow. Diamond forced to back off. That was fantastic. His Spiderling caught the Q out of Diamond proc, so he didn't get caught at all. He was able to run through his own minion wave and escape. Great job by him. I was, as you could tell, I was surprised he went in for that. I mean, considering we obviously knew where Diamond was, but to kill Darian like that, because we know he goes on tilt, we're going to see how it's going to develop. Yeah, Charo going in aggressive there. I think he's got bitten off a little bit more than he can chew. Where's the wild cards? Alexic not able to throw them out quick enough here. And Charo will escape with very little as Makata comes around the side as well. Snowball not doing enough. A little bit of a dance and backing away. Yeah, and right now, because of that kill top and that Kuban just got, it gives Makati that freedom to gank middle, to gank bottom, to help those other lanes out a little bit. As you can see by CS, Alex is ahead of Charu. Makati is going to be sneaking around here bottom. And he's not spotted by a ward. This could be very bad for Gambit, though. Genja, he does have flash, does have barrier to escape. I'm wondering where the wards are overall here as Voidal going to take a lot of damage and they're going to go straight in on towards him. Can they finish off? Charu has teleported in as well. There's the knockup. Makla will secure a kill. Genja trying to put some damage back onto him, but those four men from NYM are unchallenged. Really. There's no one there from uh, Gambit to really do anything about. And another perfectly settled kill. And again, we see that teleport being called into play. Yeah, I was just about to mention that. I mean, I wanted to see what kind of Charu are we going to see this game in terms of that teleport. And as you can tell, with the cast and if he wants to be around the map, well, I mean, he's already a castle. He can already get around the map extremely quickly, but the teleport with that assist under his belt can help him get, uh, get his item build going a little bit quicker. And I think his castle can really start to get strong very quickly. He's got that tier in there as well, which he picked up on his last trip home. See, in that top lane, what was going pretty well for Darren up there, it had that presence from Kubon to come in there. They managed to get that one kill. Kubon really not scared of fighting in there at the top, and that's what we saw. And a little bit of miscommunication, I think, because Darian pushed up that lane while Diamond was in the tribush, but then Diamond went into MYM's jungle, and it was all a little bit strange uh, from Gambit's side of things. I think there was some uh, communication problems with how that fight went down, but it leaves us either way. Gambit still having a gold lead. Meet your makers ahead in kills. Right now, it could be a lot worse for Meet your makers, but luckily they picked up those three kills, and... Let's look at over the, the past couple of games in Gambit versus Meech Makers in terms of dragons, where Gambit's got nine and Meech Makers only been limited to three. And we've seen earlier today just how impactful getting dragons over and over can be for SK, who got five or six in their first game of the day, then EG, who got quite a few in their game just previously versus uh, NIP. And right now, Meech Makers, like, that's the next big step for them. Can they maybe gank bottom lane or gank middle and then get that pressure on that dragon? Yeah, Alex has had plenty of time to be farming himself up, and obviously, he's passive now works in his favor. Obviously, it doesn't work towards his team right. anymore, but he's going to get be getting more gold from that overall. So we'll see how he really develops. He spent a lot of time in that lane just constantly farming things up as we see Nunu headed towards his top lane and he's going to be spotted there. And that's one of the problems, almost a uh, free vision that you can get out there from Warwick. But look at that damage coming out from Yorick, not Warwick. We've not seen him for a while. Uh, but we see the damage there once again from Kubon. Darian has to be so careful. Yeah, Kubon's writing his like patented 14 magic pen earlier on, which is going to help since Darian is actually using a very aggressive rune page where he has 13 flat armor pen, 5 flat magic pen, and then 8% of both. So he wants to go in for damage. He wants to make an impact, but Kubon, he's just able to turn that aggression around right onto him. So, I just saw his uh, recall being cancelled there in that top lane. Bottom lane, gone a little bit quiet after uh, what was a hectic start. That first blood going over to Gambit. 
However, we have to point out that Genja still has a big CS lead over uh, Makla. Yes, he does. And he has 1,500 gold in his pockets to spend right now. And, you know, to me, I'm, I'm the bottom lane is a really crucial point how this game's going to go, but it's all, to me, about Makate. Because in the past, he's been more of a aggressive jungler in terms of he likes to gank a lot, but he's never reactive. Like, he never counter, or counter ganks too often. And right now, he's trying to set up for it, but Diamond's nowhere near there. He's at that bottom lane. He's trying to gank there. I was just spotting Makata coming running out of the bush like, ah, good job I didn't push that one out too far. With the new new waiting in there, but look at this, Meaty Makers are all coming down, so we could be seeing a play about to happen on towards Dragon. Yeah, and Alex actually might be able to get caught here. Yeah, and they've come right into that one. Cocoon match range is going to land onto him. Alex now in all kinds of trouble. He's going to be able to stun one of them, but he went for Nunu. The other two mobile enough to finish off. Good kill, and that is most probably going to secure them this dragon as well. And what's a little weird is that you mentioned it. Darian saw Nunu running down through yeah. the river. Like, they kind of should have expected that coming. And right now, Meech Maker's trying to get this first dragon, but Diamond, he has something to say about it. Yeah, Libby Q actually going to get hooked. Get hit with a Q. Genja picks up that kill. We do see the dragon actually being picked up there by Meet Your Makers, flashes away, Q not quite landing there coming out of Diamond and able man, for not to follow up on things. And Meet Your Makers, they lose their support play, but they picked up the first dragon of the game. And to me, that's really important for them. I mean, right now, in terms of total dragons over the summer split for EU, they're seventh at 38. And we talked earlier about how Gambit is, has nine to three up against them in their series. And something like that gives you so much gold and it really kind of gives you a good mindset. It gives you the opportunity to say, all right, dragon died then, we have the timer for it. And when it comes close to that point, we'll have a pink word down on it, but do we also want to make another play on it? And if they can kind of snowball multiple dragons overall, then they will have a hefty lead. So, I'm just seeing a couple of items being picked up. Genja in particular, a lot of gold going back there, picking up a BF sword and a vamp scepter from that one. You can see from Alex's side, he's added the sheen in. On the top side, uh, Yorick now, Negatron Cloak, probably probably vital at this stage. We've seen how much damage Kubon's been doing to it. Yeah, that will be going to that Spectral's Cow, which is actually a very, very strong item. That regen you get is just so strong, but right now Kubon, he kind of countered that with the Haunting Guys, and if he gets Sword Boots right after, that Negatron Cloak is pretty much wasted gold right now for Darien. Well, let's see how that one heads as we see at the bottom here, Makla. And then we go in a bit of damage, but actually takes far too much there. Has to use his barrier. Voidal was trying to push in there as Diamond comes flying through. They keep not quite landing in on towards Libic. <laughs> He's like, hey guys, I'm here. Oh, too late. But we just saw right there, like the trading potential out of Genja versus Makler, where Genja just destroyed him with that BS sword with those three door and blades. Yeah. And Makler, he has to go back. He has to pick up an item, and he actually is going towards the build draw to Cutlass. So he will go for that Blade of the Rune King as his first major buy. And honestly, that really won't help him in lane too much. It'll help him in team fights with a spray and pray, but Genja should be just able to out damage him 1v1 now. So Kubon there just pushed onto his tower and does pick up the haunting guys here, first of all, as we've seen him do a lot during the course of the season. But Jaren starting to be able to hold his own in this lane. We'll see how that one all really develops. Makata did start to come across, but I think decided that they probably weren't going to get in onto it. And now we're seeing the second blue buffs going over to the uh, mid laners. And yeah, we, I mean, we've seen Kubon carry very well on his Elise. He has a 4.6 KDA on her. And you kind of see Mitra Maker's mindset behind that, where they've been defending her quite well. Like, Makati's been up there often, more often than he's been bottom lane or middle so far, and it kind of shows that they want to get him started early. And we're going to see how it's going to develop as the game goes on, obviously. But Charu hasn't been given much help. However, he's doing a great job in keeping up in CS. He's not down that much. Yeah, he's really not that far behind. And his teleport is now off cooldown, by the way. So, could be seeing him get involved. We have to mention as well, Alex, it's level 10. He's not popped Destiny once. Yeah, I uh, was actually just thinking about that as well. I mean, he hasn't been, had the opportunity to go top or bottom just yet. He knows Char will be able to follow him here, so maybe it's meant more for split push. As you see him set up, it looks like he actually wants to go for a teleport down this bottom lane, and they need to back away. Yeah, they need to get away from this one, as we see there. Uh, the Howling game missed time, and Makla gets absolutely destroyed. There's the full channel of Makata's ultimate coming out. It's a lot of damage coming around, but can they hold on? Flash away from Alex. They picked up the kill on Charu. Makata now underneath his own tower will go down. That's another kill for Genja, and Gambit going to be taking the first turret of the game. 
plus three kills for nothing. And wow, I mean, we just talked about Alex not use his ultimate. He comes in towards that bottom lane, and the thing was, right when Charu got in there, like right when he teleported in, Alex hit him with the gold card. It stopped him from doing any damage, and they just blew him up. And honestly, they could pick up a second turret. Yeah, I mean, I don't see what Libby's going to be able to do to stop this one. Throw out a Howling Gale, but that's really all he's got. And you see how fast they're ripping through this tower right now. That is going to be the second tower and inner turret taken here from Gambit. That just makes those three kills in that initial tower even more amazing. And what's really deadly is with that second turret going down, they lose control of their blue buff. I mean, we have to have Lubick ward that up constantly because Charo, he's going to need that blue to, uh, to power up that tier to get that Rod of Ages and to be able to have that ability to keep spamming. Not to mention Dragon should be coming up relatively soon. To me, actually, that's <laughs> losing that second turret was worse than losing two middle turrets at this point. Oh, Kuba. Ooh, I mean, very, very low. The ghoul's hammering away on him there. Probably shouldn't die to them at this stage, but still going lower than he uh, maybe bargained for going up there against Darian, who right now is pretty strong. He started, as I said before, to really be able to hold his own once again. Not quite getting the cancel on the recall there that Kubon was uh, so in desperate need of. Genja getting himself the uh, red buff. He's now got that bloodthirster finished up after picking up another kill down in that last engagement. And look at his CS now. It's up to 50. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, the lead's yeah, up to 50. Yeah, he's got like... 130 overall. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. And, oh, we see Charu getting cut. Yeah, getting the hook in there, but have they got the damage? Rift walk away there from Charu. Nice shield coming out as well, just to uh, really negate that tower damage coming in. But Diamond's come from the back, kicks Charu through. He's going to follow in from this one. Needs to be careful as the Howling Gale comes around. But Gambit, in the process, managed to pick up that middle outer turret. But they're not done here, Meet Your Makers. They're going to go aggressive. Are they going to be able to catch on to Voidal? There is the repel. Voidal going super low from this one. He's shielded himself, burning from the ignite. Not sure that he's actually going to go down there at the back. No, he's managed to live through it. I believe that Howling Gale that came out of Janna actually, yes it did, it stopped Diamond from queuing into Makati, which would have been a guarantee kill. Fantastic job by Livik, but you just see Mishir Makers, they're, they're kind of losing control in Gambit, they're taking advantage of that, they realize that, and this chaos that they're kind of putting down, where they, you know, four-man gank bottom, then push two turrets down, then just group up middle, push that turret down, it's catching Mishir Makers off guard, where Kumon, he's being forced to help, like he went down middle to help out, and he's falling behind in CS in his lane. So let's have a look at some recent purchases. Spirit Visage added in there for Darren, which means Kubon's probably not going to be able to kill him anymore. Yeah. Um, the Aegis also added in there for Diamond's Lee Sin. That was before that last fight. Also, the needlessly large rod picked up from Alexich as well. Yeah, so it looks like he either will go his Lich Bane. As you see, Kubon might get caught here. It does dodge the hook, so he'll be fine. But he might go for the Death Cap. He might go for Zonia's or go for that Lich Bane. But this is the big point. 17 and a half minutes in. Dragon is up. Meteor Makers cannot afford to let this go. But I'm not sure they can even team fight right now. They need to be able to catch someone with that cocoon, followed up with the entire CC chain or damage chain, and hopefully be able to kill Gambit. But right now they're like, all right, well, we'll just three-man push middle. And right now, Meech Makers yeah. isn't in position to stop they're, this. They're so incredibly out of position to stop anything like this happening. We can see that Diamond just off to the side, just being basically a human wall, trying to stop Meech Makers pushing through. He's actually going to take a lot of damage here, but they've took the turret. Hook has landed in on towards Kubon. This could be very bad for MYM. All going very low. Libby's going to die here at the backside. Void will actually picking up that one. And while they lost one man, honestly, that could have been a lot worse than just a one man. But Gamia are pushing towards the inhib turret. I mean, they are just punishing Mitra Makers left and right. They realize that they're all grouped up with Dragon. Why not push that turret? And then MYM, unfortunately, getting caught. Libic being the one to die right there. They're going to lose that inhibitor turret. They should be able to lose their inhibitor here in Gambit. They have a strong lead. 8,000 gold, 18 and a half minutes in. Un I mean, there's going to be a bit of damage coming out now. Hook is actually landing on Tacharu here. He's going to go very low. Force to Rift walk away. Kubon will have to repel, but he can't go anywhere. He's going to come straight back down on top of them. Wild Card's actually finishing him off, and that's another kill. Plus the inhibit. That came from really nothing. They exactly. were both teams were at Dragon. That was all positional play that just got Gambit, that bun those bunch of kills, the inner and the inhibitor, plus the inhibitor itself. And because of all the gold they've been able to farm because of their CS lead, because of their levels, because of how strong they are with these eight kills, they can afford to do that. Like, Michi Makers doesn't have a lot of wave clear. They have to pop everything they can to potentially kill one person, but who will that be on Gambit? But now Chari's teleported in behind. I don't think he... No, there's no way he's going to steal these. They're trying to go in for a kill here. Oh. 
that wasn't meant to happen. Uh, so we'll get that one fixed here, hopefully, uh, in a couple of seconds. There we go, all fixed, easy peasy. Uh, as we do get back, there wasn't quite that Dragon Steel coming out there. A little bit too slow on to react to that one as Charo gonna put a bit of a burst of damage down here. And now Gambit, they're gonna have to try and uh, defend off from this, but it looks like Media Makers have decided, you know what, we're just gonna back away, no real problem. And right now, with the lineup that Gambit has, with that inhibitor being down middle for Meteor Makers, Baron is a very likely possibility. And one thing about Gambit with Baron, every time they've gotten first Baron, they've won the game in the summer split. So that's a very dangerous thing to let Gambit uh, kind of pick up. Not to mention, they have the least amount of Barons taken at 10. So that kind of shows if they go for Baron, it's just to win the game. They don't necessarily need it all the time, but that might be the next move for them. Yeah, with the Oracles coming in there as well, I've seen them. Man and Moon actually finished off here by Darian as well. And now Alex H is coming up towards that top lane to join him. Go for a kill on Kuban, who's uh, he's a spider after all. He'll be able to get away. Lovely Cocoon comes around onto Darian. That pretty much stops all of that happening. Or does it? Alex is really getting close in there as well. They're going to try and have this turret away. As Diamond comes around, Makata and Mac uh, and Livic, sorry, are going to be waiting off towards the side. There's the Sonic Wave hitting, but will he follow through from this one? Doesn't look like it. Oracle clearing out vision as well. They've completely zoned them out of that final outer turret. Yeah, Meech Makers can't afford to do it. They're not strong enough, first of all. But with that middle inhibitor being down, they have Super Minions constantly pushing up against them that they have to concede pretty much their two outer turrets. And Gambit are taking advantage of this right now. We're going to have a 5 on 5 probably break out here relatively soon. And who's it going to come out of? I mean, Meech Makers, do they want to go for a stand here? Like, do they want to kind of lock us on down? If they do catch Genja. Yeah, they catch Genja. They're going to try and explode him, which they've managed to do. There's a shutdown coming in, but the rest of Gambit going to get involved. Charu's going to die. Makata's going down as well. Looks like Gambit are going to try and keep following through from this one. There's a flash. Destiny going to be coming out here from Alex Hitch. Where's he coming? Right inside the base. Stun onto Libic. Wild cards will come through. Darian gets that one, but now Alex having to run. Kuwon putting down good damage. Makla comes in to get that kill, but he's going to pay the price as well. That will be an ace coming out from Gambit. They're going to try and finish it right here. Wow, I mean, they easily can. They have a long death timer on Meteor Makers. They have super minutes here, and this looks like it will be the game, definitely. And Gambit with a very quick win, 21 and a half minutes. We talked about their boot camp. How well has it worked? And we're seeing it right now, Joe. Well, it, it seems to have done wonders for them, that's for sure, is that first Nexus so oh, it does go do down. They're not going to be able to finish off just here uh, right now as Meteor Makers do spawn in. We're only 20 minutes in, we shouldn't forget that. The spawn time is on massively long at this stage of things. But we saw there what Gambit are doing. They're ahead. So they're pushing towers. Meat Makers either give them up or they fight, and they can't win fights. You've just seen that right there. What do they do here? They need to hold on somehow, and that's going to be really difficult to do against Gambit where they lose so many objectives. They have pretty much no income at this point. Obviously, they have lanes to farm up, but the problem is Livic, he needs like an Oracle. He needs to be able to clear out all that vision in their jungle so they can get those camps. They need to... Well, they, they can't afford to stop Baron because Gambit can just kind of walk away, but they need that farm. They need Charu to maybe pick up a kill or two just to kind of get him going a little bit quicker. And then with that, like they have the potential to burst someone down. Alex doesn't have a uh, Zonia, so you can burst him. As you saw, Genja is easily burstable if you do land a cocoon onto him. And as long as Meteor Makers can target them down one by one, then they should have that potential but they need to hold on. They need to hold on like five to 10 minutes at least. Well, we've seen some pretty big items being picked up recently. That locket now being completed as Alex going to get in here on towards Mackle, who is invisible, but he's not going to be invisible for very long here. Alex just blindly following there up the lane, and now the rest of Gambit coming in here. Mackle looks like he's going to be a very dead rat. We'll actually use the Blade of the Ruin King there on towards Alex, but that won't help him out. Genja gets the kill. And that's all due to the lack of vision that Meteor Rickers has. They don't know exactly where anyone is, and to be honest, that was kind of maybe a desperation move by Mackle, because Alex is ultimate is now up. Like, it was almost up when they started fighting. Charu is out of position right now, and Gambit, yeah, they can. They're going to try and win this one. Charu is going to be forced to recall from this. Obviously, that second Nexus sorry, is all that really stops Gambit walking in there right now. It's already down to less than half as the kick comes in. Kubon going to be knocked back. There's a hook onto Charu. He's going to surely die as well. Alex picks up that one, and they can just finish the game right here. They don't need the kills. They're going to pick up the second Nexus turret. The inhibitor has just spawned right behind them, which will stop them finishing the game right there, but they shouldn't be able to turn around. There's still 30 seconds here on Charu. Meteor Makers, like, they can't hold on. Like, they have five yeah. members of Gambit up. You still Charu down for 20 seconds. There's nothing they can do. Yeah, they're going to push straight in for this one. Hook not going uh, to land, but it doesn't matter. Gambit going to walk through, finish off the Nexus, and take down Meteor Makers in 24 very, very quick minutes there. That was an absolute annihilation from Gambit. That was 
a win, a very convincing win for Gambit. And we talked about earlier in the boot camp, how well has it worked out? I think we saw right there, it's worked out phenomenally for them. They pretty much had Mutual Makers written down to a T. They knew exactly what to do against them, completely countered them. But now Mutual Makers, what do they do? They're still in place. There still is that possibility of them getting into the playoffs with a chance.